Hi, Steve here. This is another video in the series on how to make generative art. In this video, we're going to learn about buffer canvases using the create graphics function. And we'll also learn about the get function and the image function. A buffer canvas is a canvas in addition to the one we usually see. It's a second invisible canvas. What you're seeing here are six different projects of mine that all use buffer canvases. But each of these projects use buffer canvases in a different way. I'll briefly go over each of these ways. So first let's learn the basics of the buffer canvas. Uh, I'm starting with a blank canvas. I'm going to take out the draw function. And then we're going to name a variable. We'll call it CNV for canvas. And we're going to call the function create graphics. And let's make this second canvas the same size as our regular canvas. So we'll just do width and height. A lot of times the buffer canvases are the same size as your regular canvas. So on that buffer canvas, we're going to draw a circle at, say, 200, 200 and make it size 200. But in order to draw on a buffer canvas, we have to have cnv dot in front of circle. That's whatever the variable is here. We're naming the canvas. So if I name this canvas1, then this would be canvas1.circle. So anything we do with the buffer canvas has to have the name of the buffer canvas dot in front of it. So if we want to fill that circle uh, 25500, which is red, we have to have cnv1 dot in front of it. Right now, if I hit play, we don't see anything because I'm drawing to the invisible canvas. To get the invisible canvas onto our regular canvas, we use the image function. So image, and then we'll put cnv1, comma, 0, comma, 0. And there is our canvas brought in to our regular canvas. So the first part here is the name of the canvas, and this is the X and Y position of the top left corner of the canvas. So if I had this 100, 0, then it moves over. Let's do a background on the other canvas. So let's do cnv1.background, and we'll do it uh, 120, and hit play. There we go. If I change this to 100, 100, now the canvas starts right here. Another thing we could do, instead of just drawing the whole canvas, we can get something from the canvas, an image. So let's say image equals uh, get, and we have to have cnv1.get in front of it. And we're going to get uh, from... 0, 0, we're going to grab uh, the first 300, comma, 300 pixels. And then we can put the image, instead of the canvas, we'll use IMG. And let's put that at 0, 0. And now we've just grabbed about a quarter of our canvas. So when I get from the canvas, the 0, 0 is the starting position on the canvas. The 300 is the width of what I want to get, and this is the height of what I want to get. So if I change this starting location to 100, whoops, 100, now I'm getting this. I could do this to 100. Let's go back to image canv1, comma, 0, comma, 0. So we're going to look at the entire canvas, and I'll comment this part out. So we get this again. Uh, I want to add some more stuff to this canvas a little bit. Uh, let's make this starting at 150, comma 150. And then we'll add a rectangle, say, with a different fill. Let me add one more thing. So I've got some things on this canvas. Now, 
instead of getting from a specific location, we can grab from a random location. And let's specify how big we're going to grab. We'll, we'll grab a 100 by 100 piece off of the canvas. So we're going to be getting from the width, but not the whole width. We'll subtract 100 from it because uh, otherwise we would get only a portion of the canvas. Uh, so, and then this one will be the height minus 100. And I forgot the random. So let's put random in front of this and random in front of this. And then instead of the whole canvas, let's just make the image there. All right, here we go. So go, and then I grab another part of the canvas, grab another part of the canvas. There's another part, and keep going. There's a green. So what could we do with this? So if we look at this piece on the right, this is some tiling. And the way I've made these tiles is by grabbing pieces from the image on the left. So first, I drew the image on the left on a buffer canvas, and then I grabbed parts of that canvas at random to make these tiles. So that's one thing you can do with a buffer canvas. Another thing you can do with a buffer canvas is to draw a single shape, and I'm using a function called clip to put some texture behind this. And after I have the image with the texture, then I place it on my canvas. So the advantage here is that this canvas has no background to it. It's not a black background, it's just no background. So when I place it here, there's no background to interfere with the rest of the art. This piece right here is a composite of two different canvases, this canvas and this canvas. But first for this strip right here, I put that on another canvas. Then I place that strip on this canvas and on this canvas, both of these have the same background. I made a drawing here, I made a drawing here. Then these black strips here are actually erases. I used an erase function, which you'll learn about later. And then I placed this canvas on top of this canvas so that this shine through these gaps. And we get this. The get function can also be used to grab the entire canvas. If I do canv.get, and I just get rid of all of this, just like this, then it's gonna give me the entire canvas. You can even use the get function like this to grab the current main canvas. So if you wanted to draw something there, save that for later, and then bring it back, you could. But a third way to use Git is to grab individual pixels. So if you want to grab individual pixels, you use the Git function, but with only two arguments, the X and the Y position. So now we're not going to use image, but I want to print to console the IMG. Actually, let's call this something else. We'll call it PIX for pixel, and we'll print the PIX and it has grabbed pixel colored 120, 120, 120, and 255 alpha. And that is the background. So it grabbed the background. But if we grab this circle, which is at 150, 150, let's change this to 150, 150. So it should be grabbing the middle of the circle, which is blue. And there we go. It grabbed 255, 0, 0 alpha 255. Now we could isolate these results. Let's add comma pix and a bracket zero. That's going to grab the first item here. If I had put one, it would grab this one. If I put two, it's this. Three, it's this. So let's hit play and it should give 255. There it is. So then if we know the pixel that we grabbed, we can do some sort of if statement. Let's say if uh, pix zero is equal to, equal, equal, 120, then print background 
to console else print I don't know let's say print shape and we'll hit go so it grab 255 it recognizes that as a shape if we put this back to 250 250 remember that was grabbing the background there it goes it recognizes that that's the background so what could we do with that information so this is my art piece called string theory and this is a buffer canvas for string theory for this particular piece I drew bands of white and black, and where there is white, it is allowed to draw. And where there is black, it is not allowed to draw. So that's how I got this shape based on this buffer canvas. This is my piece in flow. This has two buffer canvases. One buffer canvas it's using to grab the color. So you can see this orange is this orange, this yellow is this yellow. The other buffer canvas is a grayscale and is used to determine the angle of flow of these lines. So this color gray has lines going up and down. Let me zoom in a little bit. Whereas this white appears to be going more sideways, this shade of gray appears to be going in this direction. This is a piece called Traveling Circus and you can see that this green shape on a buffer canvas is the green shape behind here but i also have another buffer canvas let's zoom in a little bit these lines don't interfere with each other the dots do go over the lines but the lines are drawn first and they don't go on top of each other and the way i'm keeping them from going on top of each other is by drawing additional lines on this buffer canvas and these additional lines are drawn thicker than these lines. When I draw a segment of this line, I get the color from this canvas. And I say, is it black? If it's black, then don't draw anymore. If it's white, then I can continue drawing. So this is called line packing. You can also do this with circles where you grab several points around the circle. You're drawing circles on the buffer canvas you're checking the buffer canvas. If that space on the buffer canvas is free on all of the points that you grab around that circle, then you're allowed to draw an additional circle. And if any of those points around the circle are occupied, then you don't draw a circle. So that would be called circle packing. Here's an example of circle packing. This is by Gorilla Sun. I don't know if he used the method that I use to do circle packing, there are additional ways that you can do circle packing. In this piece by me, Collisions, I have a whole bunch of buffer canvases. Each of these bricks is its own buffer canvas, and I've saved these all to an array of buffer canvases. We're gonna learn about arrays in the next video. But the reason I've got all of these in an array is because this is animated. There we go. So as illustrated by that last piece, uh, you don't need to have the buffer canvas the same size as the regular canvas. So I could make this uh, 50 comma 50 if I want. And then I could draw a little bitty image on that canvas and place it on a brick. The other thing I've done is I've drawn my art on a really giant buffer canvas so that when somebody hits print, they'll get a nice big image that they can print and hang on their wall. But I can take that giant buffer image, scale it down to show it in the available space on your regular canvas. So here's my current work in process. And there's a function down here that checks the aspect ratio of the available space on the canvas compared to the aspect ratio of the large buffer canvas and make some adjustments uh, to come up with a scale percentage. And then when I get the scale percentage, then I can use this scale function and drop my image on the canvas. This is canv1 is my buffer canvas. But if somebody hits P to print, it's printing the buffer canvas, not my regular canvas. So the image is really big. Before we place the image on the canvas, let's translate and rotate 
So I'm going to translate to width times 0 0.5, height times 0 0.5, and then we'll rotate. Instead of doing degrees, I'm just going to do pi times 0 0.5, and that'll rotate at 90 degrees. But then if we place our image, we've translated. Now one thing we could do is we could translate backwards after we rotate. So we could copy this down and we put negative in front of both of these. And now if we hit play, we get the buffer canvas rotated. I can rotate this by pi and it's flipped upside down or 1.5 times pi and it's rotated on the side. That's uh, 270 degree rotation. By the way, you can also rotate backwards. I forgot to tell you that in the rotate video, but right now I'm rotating uh, 90 degrees in one direction. But if I put negative here, it rotates 90 degrees in the opposite direction. Another thing we could do is we could use tint uh, this is a new function. Tint is a way to modify the color of your buffer canvas. This can also be used with photos. Let's tint this, and this is going to use RGB. If we're in RGB mode, it's going to use RGB colors. If it's in HSB mode, you can use HSB colors in here. But let's do 255, comma, 0, comma, 0. So that should be a blue tint. And we'll hit play. Sorry, that's a red tint, not a blue tint. So let's put 00255, that should be a blue tint. There we go. Now we could also uh, give this some alpha. If you don't want to colorize it, but you want alpha for your buffer canvas, you have to have all white, and then we could do, I don't know, 50 alpha, and we hit play, and now we have a washed out image and if we had put another image on our regular canvas, let's do that. And so we can see the circle behind the buffer canvas. But we could also tint it and do alpha. So we'll do 0, 0 here. And now we have a red tint buffer canvas with alpha. You can barely see it, so let me increase that. There we go. Let's say you wanted to tint something, but then stop tinting. Maybe you're in a loop or something. You can call a no tint function. And then whatever you do after this will not have a tint. So let's say you're putting several buffer canvases onto your regular canvas. You might want to tint one of your buffer canvases, but then stop tinting for the second buffer canvas. Okay, I think I covered all the different ways that I wanted to that you can use buffer canvases. That's going to do it for this video on buffer canvases. Uh, try it out, see what you can make. You can join my Discord and post art on my Discord. Next, I'm sending you to watch this video on the erase function, which I recorded last year. If you're not using the playlist, then look for the video link in the video description, and I'll also pin a comment. After that video, we'll be looking at arrays, which are basically lists of items. If you have any comments, of course, put those down below or post them on my Discord channel. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.